So since last video, what I've did is uh, I cleaned up the other half of the keyboard here. Uh, and I didn't take any footage of it just because it's more of the same. Uh, but what, what I did is also uh, free all the black keys so nothing gets stuck anymore. And if you refer to the previous video, most of those ones here were getting stuck. So pretty happy on, on how that turned out. Um, I also scrub all the ivory and I also tried to use a buffing wheel with a buffing compound on the drill press to uh, rebuff those ones and I don't know if you can tell the difference from the third to the two first ones but uh, there's a shine to it but I'm still not quite happy with it so what I'm going to try to use is semi-chrome which was uh, mentioned on uh, some of the online forums I'm at and also some people in the previous video commented on using semi-chrome for that. So I'm pretty happy on how this works. Obviously it doesn't remove the stains, but really puts a glow back onto it. You can see where I stopped right there. So I'm gonna do the full keyboard with that. point in time here uh, the whole bottom section is all cleaned up I repolish all the keys and I use semi chrome polish and this works wonders uh, the keys are nice and beautiful they feel great and it was very easy to use as well so I'll leave, I'll leave a link in the description if you're curious about semi chrome so just look in the description under uh, something I noticed while I was uh, cleaning up the base here is that down here uh, there is friction between two keys and we can actually hear that so I'm gonna have to remove a little like remove a little bit of wood from the, the piece that seemed to have moved over time and there's another one one of the black key and, and that's the one that used to be stuck uh, all the time it's not stuck anymore but the fabric that uh, prevents like uh, I guess it, it, it protects the wood now nowadays they put actually a felt in there but back in those days I guess they use some kind of fabric so what I'm going to be using is just a little bit of glue and tape it in place until the glue sets and I'll use some wood glue and then uh, hopefully that's going to do the trick but we can hear rubbing there as well now a little something I found interesting you can see like the the shims they use uh, to create space in between the lower and the upper part of the case are actually theater, theater tickets. Now that one says uh, 8 o'clock, that's seats, and this one says reserved, and uh, we've got something similar at the other end there. I thought it was kind of a neat piece of history. So the next part I'm going to tackle is what creates the space in between all the jacks. Uh, so I'm going to dust it off, I cleaned up the felts here. But most importantly, all of those um, little uh, pins are covered with what seems to be leather. And underneath they're pretty clean, but on top there's some uh, dust and dirt that I want to kind of try to scrub off. And then what I'll do after that is apply some uh, extra fine graphite lubricant which is a, a dry lubricant and I'm gonna apply that in between here and also on the jacks 
and uh, in the, another section of the uppercase. Now this is the inside, so the piece that I just put is going to slide right in into here that's uh, spreading the jacks and then the jacks are actually hitting on this part here. So if we look under, this is the section where the jack is actually going uh, up and down on and I, I think it's dust but like uh, it could be graphite as well. It's very, very slippery here. So I'll add some graphite on here after I clean it up. And I'm gonna clean up the whole case again. Uh, remove dust and sanding and all of that. You can see another uh, piece of uh, paper from back in those days, I guess. And I'm gonna deal with all of those. Uh, I'll be keeping in mind uh, all of those here are tiny, tiny pieces of wood. So I want to make sure I'm not breaking any of those, so uh, being very careful as I'm doing that. something I noticed while I'm cleaning up and fixing up uh, the piano is uh, I notice I, I'm actually enjoying finding names on different parts so the uppercase uh, has this name here but I just found this piece uh, of information here or another name uh, as you can see I'll try to focus so it says C trail and I'm guessing there was somebody that would do just this front piece with all the letters and stuff and then send them to the next person who would be assembling like this whole top section. So I think fun, it's a fun part of history and it's worth noting. Okay, so this section is ready to go back on. lines up with the lineup pins that were at the bottom. Just about to put this one in but then I don't know if you guys uh, remember we took this key off to glue it and then I just saw it so I have to take the uppercase back out unfortunately and uh, just reinstall that single key
we're back to the same uh, spot where I forgot to put that key. Uh, all the screws uh, of the uh, case here and the strip is installed. Uh, one is missing here, but I need to put those uh, brass uh, bits back on first. So next up, I'm gonna clean up the hammers. So just a dust job, see the, the dust on them. And I will also have a look at this one here that had that has the tape on. So I cleaned up the glue from the tape to see what kind of repair was done on here. And I mean, the, the glue joint looks really good. Uh, there's some flex on, well, a little bit of flex sideways. And this way seems really good too. So I think what I'm gonna do is just leave it as, like, just like that, where it's not very, not really visible. But I'll remember that uh, number 50 was the one that was broken. So the action is back in and uh, I had my wife come down and uh, try it and although the action uh, she was pleased with how smooth it was and how the keys were coming back up compared to what it used to be, um, there was a vibration and I just spent like 45 minutes trying to figure out what it was. At first I thought it was, uh, we uh, obviously you probably noticed that we remove the lid. Uh, I thought maybe it could be uh, some of those uh, splits. This one was the one that I was able to see when we bought the piano. Uh, this one uh, seems to be a glue joint. And then uh, there's a couple more here. So I don't know if the piano is actually settling with the new uh, humidity, but for a second there, I thought that we had a vibration from the soundboard. And until I pressed down, on the cracks while we were doing the, the keys and stuff. 
So what I decided to do is finally go around and tighten all the screws uh, that could be loose. I found a couple, uh, this one here was loose a little bit and that one over there, uh, but the vibration was still there. And I finally figured out that there was a nail stuck inside there and like I took it out and now it's working. So. Vibration's gone, uh, so the next step for us, uh, I had my piano technician that came in and took measurements for the bass string. So we're looking at replacing all the strings. So because this piano was built in the in 1874, this would mean that it, this would have been tuned to uh, 432 instead of 440 that is now. So my concern was to kind of restring it with what the strings are today and then increase to 440 which creates more tension and then what my piano technician was saying is that we've got some strings that are like the gauge is very small it's not something he's used to see on the newer pianos so we went through everything took the gauges of everything uh, the inner gauge and with the coil of the bass strings and uh, so we're basically looking at changing all the strings. So it's still out of tune. We're not going to get it in tune. Uh, we also remove one of the one of the pins here, one of these ones, uh, just to see how hard it was. And it was like a fight. So I think I've got about 250 strings to remove. So I've got some work cut out for me. I would also like to thank uh, Doc Scatlin. Uh, after the first video, I mentioned that I, I was missing some pieces of veneer here in the two corners, and those two pieces were missing from the original piano. Uh, this is Brazilian rosewood veneer. So if you get, if you know anything about Brazilian rosewood, it's barely impossible to get your hands on. So Doc uh, contacted me, and he said that he had a stack of veneer that uh, he would like to send me a few pieces from and so we, we exchanged uh, pictures uh, to get a color match and we, he ended up sending me those so I got those last week in the mail uh, I'm pretty stoked so we'll be able to uh, do a color match here uh, and like the color is so close it, it, it's probably going to disappear and, and just look like uh, very very fluid so Doc like I'm really really thankful and thank you so much. So I hope you guys join us in the next video where I'll be taking the strings off and we're going to start cleaning up that soundboard and uh, see if we need to uh, refinish it, if we need to fix the, the cracks and, and all of that. So uh, quite a bit of uh, stuff coming up. So thanks you all for stopping by again and until next time, I wish you well.